Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. A uh, couple of Portuguese whites today, um, one from the Douro, one from Tejo. Uh, first one, 2013, Tons de Duorum. Uh, Duorum's the winery, Tons is, uh, they, they do a Tons red, and uh, uh, but yeah, this is from the Douro. Uh, and grapes, blah, 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 Vizinho, Rabigato, Vidello, uh, aka Guveo, um, Arinto and Moscatel Gallego Branco. Uh, just think of it as a white Douro blend. Let's just dig in. Now, Douro Reds are, um, I, I, I suppose I think of them almost like in the same style as Malbec uh, from Argentina. Uh, they're full and they're throaty and they're fragrant and there's lots of fruit in there and they, uh, uh, they have no problem getting to 14% alcohol. Uh, and it's probably possible to do uh, uh, Douro Whites in that same style, but most people choose not to. So this comes in at 12% alcohol. Some of those grapes that are there, yes, they'll have been originally grown for uh, making port style wines, or, well, white port, uh, but... Um, uh, but they, what they seem to do is, in the heat, uh, they don't over-ripen and uh, they keep a little bit of freshness in there. Um, but um, I don't know whether it's the Muscatel that's, that's talking here. I stick my nose in there and there's this, um, uh, what I call the tinned pear character that I get in a lot of white Bordeaux. Uh, but there's also something quite, uh, and this is where the Muscatel bit comes in, uh, it's like fragrant and gingery and spicy. Interesting to taste it. Yeah, it's almost as if someone's got a... Um, um, uh, a Bordeaux Sauvignon and uh, put, put a little bit of, um, uh, maybe not so much Muscat, but a little bit of Gewürztraminer in there. There's, yeah, there's that quite exotic lychee edge. Um, and uh, if you'd asked me what it was uh, alcohol-wise, I'd have said it feels it feels a bit higher than 12% because it's, it's not, it not, doesn't feel like it's been constrained or anything to try and keep, keep that alcohol down. It's a, it's a full, full flavour, not too rich, and it's got that crispness at the finish, but in terms of the flavour itself, it is quite an expansive flavour. Uh, let's see whether we can say the same about uh, the next one, which is Tagus Creek Chardonnay Fernel Pires 2013 uh, from Tejo. Not much difference in alcohol, 12.5% compared with 12 on the first one, uh, but it, it smells like a simpler wine. Um, so um, the Chardonnay is just this like, nice, gentle uh, melon character that's coming through. Uh, the Fernau Perez may be living, giving a little bit of stony bite, but um, not too much beyond there. I mean, it smells okay, but um, not as complex as, as the Tons. And when you taste it, I think that's when the Fernau Perez comes in. So you've got these Chardonnay flavours, ever so slightly nutty, melon, citrus, maybe something a little bit more exo exotic like guava. Uh, but the, um, the Fernal Pires is just uh, providing a little bit of stony uh, restraint to stop it getting a little bit broad. And um, I, I think they've, they've handled that rather nicely. I don't know which is the more expensive of the two. Um, so that, that is the cheaper one. I mean, it tastes, it doesn't taste as good as the first one, but it tastes like a pretty good wine. Um, and um, I like both of those. It's easy.